dude, dude, I totally decided to become a cage fighter today. I mean, I've been dreaming to become a cage fighter since I was a little kid. And now I'm gonna finally do it. And I'm, I mean, I'm like 35 years old. I have nothing to lose, so why shouldn't I do it? I mean, if CM Punk can do it at the age of 37, why can't I? The gamer is a goddamn pussy. Did you see how he got his ass whooped in F9? It was totally embarrassing. Okay, this is never gonna work out. Luckily, I remember seeing an alternative way to become the greatest fighter of them all. August 2015, I gained the early access to the annual Gamescom convention in Köln, Germany. All of my friends abandoned me to stand in long lines to witness the next big trend in gaming, while I was more interested in meeting smaller game developers that I can chat with. There was this one game that stuck out to me. It is a game based on the Rocky Balboa franchise, in which you manage a fighter and train him to be the best to ever do it. The game was filled with references to the brim, parodying every great franchise under the sun. I played like 10 minutes and I still remember to this day how fun and addicting the game was, and I also remember how proud the developer was of his creation, which was pretty nice to see. I mean, you really saw the shine in his eyes. I'm Dr. Sledgehammer by the way, and today, roughly 6 years later, I'm gonna finally try this game out and see if it's really as good as I remember it being. Now. Lucky for me, I managed to grab myself a copy on my last Steam sale, so without further ado, let's get started. The story here is pretty basic stuff. While you were still young, you saw your father get killed in a Thomas Wayne-like fashion by this mysterious Mortal Kombat character. Frank, a good friend of your father, consults you. He gives you emotional support, and then he adopts you. I wonder what your mom thinks of that. As you grow up, you decide to become a fighter so you can make your father proud. One day, on the way to work, you get ambushed by a bunch of bikers who make Terminator references and then proceed to whoop your ass within an inch of your life. After they leave, Mickey appears to offer you advice to become a better fighter. That's right, some of the stuff in this game is straight up ripped from the Rocky franchise. As a matter of fact, many of the Rocky characters actually appear in this game, be it directly such as Mickey the trainer or Adrian, Rocky's lover, or indirectly such as this gentleman over here. Recognize him? We are dealing with a point and click game in which you manage the life of a fighter. Your job is to make the best possible adjustments, but ultimately you have no control over the fights themselves. The goal of the game is to become the champion of the world. You need to do so, so you can find the person who murdered your dad. In order to be the best in the world, you need to work out and improve yourself. So you spend most of your time working out to improve your stats and you partake in fights to get skill points that you can spend to gain new moves, buffs and debuffs. Hey, just do me a favor and make sure you read them through because it will save you a lot of time down the line. Just trust me. You have bars that show your health points, hunger level, happiness and energy. Hunger is basically the most important stat here, as being hungry would prevent you from working out, and it would even prevent you from sleeping. To get food you need money, you get money by working or by partaking in fights. If you are hungry and have no money, you're in deep shit. Here is something cool. Mickey will feed you when you run out of money. I found this to be quite useful, so I started abusing it. However, after feeding me roughly three times, Mickey stopped feeding me and he became really cold towards me. Why does this sound so familiar? Every time a day passes, your stats take a huge drop, forcing you to invest even more time just to maintain your stats at an acceptable level. The higher the stat, the higher the drop, so you will spend most of your time budgeting your time to eat, sleep, work, train, fight and repeat until you beat the game. You get a fight every three days, and you want to make sure that we're taking as many fights as possible, and you also want to make sure, if possible, to win these fights to make Mickey proud of you. Plus, Whenever you miss or lose a fight, you prolong the game for an additional 3 days, so yeah, you're basically stuck in a 3 days cycle of hell until you finally learn to read the goddamn manuals. Eat, sleep, work, train, fight and repeat. 
eat, sleep, work, train, fight and repeat. Whenever you finish one cycle, you cannot wait to sign up for the next fight. Eat, sleep, work, train, fight and repeat. Eat, sleep, work, train, fight and repeat. And if you lose a fight, it gets even worse. It gets more addicting. You will sit there day and night trying to improve. You will forget what the fucking sun looks like. And also, you will hear this goddamn music loop in your sleep. The good news is, at some point you learn that you only really have to focus on one of these three stats, because depending on how you fight, training the wrong stat can make you weaker. The game forces you to pick up one of three different fighting styles. This is actually based on real fighting signs. You have your knockout artist with the fast twitch muscle fibers who can generate powerful short bursts of energy to deliver a fast knockout blow. The weak point of these types of fighters is that they are known to gas out pretty quickly because their muscles build up lactic acid at an accelerated rate. On the other end of the spectrum you have your fighters with short twitch muscle fibers who have much higher endurance and rely on dishing out large volumes of strikes instead of delivering that one haymaker. This type of fighter has a high pain tolerance and is pretty hard to knock out. In the game this is reflected by an increase in health points. And finally you have your precision fighters that do not wanna get hit, that pick their shots really carefully, only delivering precise strikes, preferably kicks for better reach and higher knockout power. You are given a booklet early on in the game that explains to you how to play each of these three builds. Read it carefully. I'm going with the way of the tiger as I decided early on in the game that I want to use a lot of leg kicks to immobilize my opponents. Because as you might know when the legs hurt, the head may open up and the head kicks will land. This means that I do not really need a lot of power but I do need a lot of agility and a moderate amount of stamina. Both stamina and strength actually give me penalties so I have to be really careful here. The game contains a lot of side quests, for example, one day after coming back from practice, I discovered a mysterious suitcase that appeared in my tiny house. You use it, you discover a crime taking place somewhere in town. This is probably one of the laziest plot devices ever, but I kinda like it. After using the box long enough, CTE kicks in and our main character decides to put on a bandana to become the local superhero, Dark Fist. As you wander around, you start uncovering a larger plot involving mutants that you can fight. What the fuck? Are these the goddamn ninja turtles? God damn it, I've had more than enough of turtle games, and now they've even followed me to a new franchise. The game mostly follows the plots of the Rocky franchise, Fight Club and the Turtles franchise, but also references all kinds of other franchises. As mentioned earlier, the cameos and references to famous TV series, movies, internet memes and video games are everywhere. So much so that you will actually stop caring at some point and you will find it normal. The developers should have exercised a little bit more moderation here. There are multiple types of fights that you can partake in in order to gain skill points and you should make the most of it. Only thing you have to be careful of is that in some fights you can get injured and you might have to miss out on a couple of bouts to recover. Alternatively, you can of course go to Chinatown and heal yourself with some Chinese magic. While climbing the ranks in the league, you meet your drinking buddy Roy, who strangely enough is also one of your rivals. You can spar him in his backyard to gain skill points and you can also take him along for some weird workout sessions where he just follows you around and makes weird remarks. Let me feel your power. He also kinda forces his sister, Adrian, on you. No, she's, she's not bad, but I don't understand why nobody kiss her. After beating everyone in the minor league and becoming a serious title contender, you meet one of the town's largest mobsters who asks you to work for him. I refused, of course, because I wanted to beat the world steroid champion to become the best ever. During this part of the game, you notice that the game loses a lot of its steam. Barely anything changes, you keep doing your three day cycles, except you do not really need to work that much anymore, you just build up your notoriety to get fights and you gain insane amounts of cash by acting like a monkey in commercials. Worst thing about this part of the game is that you can easily exploit it. Here, let me show you. I have a huge amount of money now, so I can constantly go and buy steroids, I mean magic potions. Instead of sleeping, I can just pump in 7 energy drinks that cost me next to nothing. I get my ass handed to me in a fight and have to take some time off? Fuck that! Meet Dr. Casey Jones, who just stuffs 9 pizzas down my throat, instantly healing me of any brain damage that I just took. 
I can spend most of my time on improving my agility stat and just fighting. And here is a sight to behold. Look at this, you have your manager sitting around with your girlfriend all day. Who knows what they're doing? I mean, he appears to be an accomplished boxing manager who spends most of his life just sitting around on this couch right here. And he's single. Well, our fighter is some sort of a loser to be honest with you. His main goal in life is to kill some dude. It's all downhill from here. And here is something that is probably unintentionally funny. See, you have to chat with Adrian in order to get her affection, but that drains energy and I lose a lot of time. I need her affection in order to gain a buff with which I can train and barely get hungry or lose energy. You can skip that by just giving her a gift. Here, check this out. Adrian, I love you. Please give me that buff that I so much need. Oh, she doesn't love me? Okay, here's a present. Oh, now she loves me. Fuck yes. I know, I know, they really wanted to include Adrian because they wanted to pay homage to the Rocky franchise. However, honestly, I felt like she's a burden to me in the entire game. I hope the developers add a better dating mechanic in Punch Club 2, making dating a little bit more enjoyable. I mean, give her some more character development. Maybe have me beat up a couple of her old boyfriends to gain her affection or something. So let's summarize this. You have a really fun and addicting game with huge amounts of pop culture references and a really good humor. The end game is kinda weak, I would have wished for more stuff to do to be honest with you. Especially with Adrian, I feel like dating here is a huge missed opportunity. Another thing that I almost forgot to mention is that I really like that you can have a completely different endgame if you choose to become a mobster. Instead of flying to Russia and going after the title, you will go to prison and you will later take out other mobsters. This really adds replayability value. I give the game a solid 7 out of 10. I really had a blast playing this game and I would strongly recommend that you check it out. Especially if you want a game that challenges you, because trust me, this game is much harder than it looks. Yeah. Anyway, I was Dr. Sledgehammer, I'm glad that you guys tuned in, and I will see you guys on the next Sledgehammer Review. Bye. At least I got chicken.